We reported earlier on the Chancellor's spring statement when he announced changes to fuel duty and the national insurance threshold. Now, that all comes as a cost-of-living crisis grips the nation. We've been asking for your questions about uh, how Rishi Sunak's announcements will affect you. And to answer them, we have our consumer editor, Chris Choi, and our social affairs correspondent, Sarah Corker. And our first question is for Chris, and this is from Len Lindley in Penderyn in Wales. We rely on oil central heating because we are not on the main gas supply line. Usually we pay between 35 to 45 pence a litre, but this time we had to pay £1.46 per litre for our oil. My husband and I are both retired and we are both home all day. This is now becoming a choice between heating and eating for many people in my village. This cannot be right, surely. Well, she's got a point, hasn't she, Chris? Um, it, I mean, it's a very difficult situation that's facing so many people. I've got a feeling that 1.7 million households will be cheering Lindley for raising <laughs> this tonight uh, because people that have heating oil are excluded from the energy price cap. The Chancellor mentions that an awful lot. He didn't mention it today. He didn't extend it to include people like Lindley. They feel left out and let down. And there's more for them tonight, because we checked with the Treasury earlier on, and though fuel duty is going down, not on heating oil. OK, Chris, thank you. And let's, let's hear from Claire in Lincolnshire with her question. I'd like to know what Rishi Sunak is um, going to do to help us families with disabled children as I am a carer of my youngest daughter and there's more than me out there who needs help with extra bit of extra benefits to help push us along with price rising hiking electricity bills. All right, Sarah, what advice can you give to Claire? Well, in April, we know that benefits like universal credit will go up by 3.1%. Now, that is pegged to the inflation rate from September. That's normal practice. But these, of course, are exceptional circumstances. And the government has been under pressure to go further. Inflation, as we've heard, is expected to hit 8 or 9% later this year. And I think, surprisingly, and to the disappointment of some, there was actually no mention of levels of benefits or, or pensions today. All right, Sarah, thank you. We've got another question for you from Sheena. Now, Sheena says, I'm a single homeowner who earns 20000 a year. She says, I can't get any support and still the cost of living rises. Is there any help out there? What do you think, Sarah? OK, so the good news is that there is some extra help for the most vulnerable households. Now, it's something called the Household Support Scheme. It's being doubled to £1 billion a year. Now, the way it works, it will be emergency grants that are administered by local councils. So people can get money to help with things like food, utility bills and clothing. And it's up to individual councils in terms of who qualifies for that. Uh, so people will be able to apply. Debt charities have welcomed this move, but say given the scale of the cost of living crisis, it's a drop in the ocean. All right, Sarah, thank you. We're going to come back to Chris in the studio now because uh, Jonas, Chris, has this question about petrol. He says, what about taxi drivers? The price of fuel has shot up. How's a five pence cut going to help them survive? Well, yeah, you do feel for people like the taxi drivers and Jonas because a lot of us rely on our cars to get to work. Of course, for them, it is work. And people like Jonas, a lot of us, will have seen that on some forecourts, the prices have gone up by 5p a litre in a single day. So it could be... A very, very short time indeed before this tax cut is overtaken by rising prices. And also, petrol retailers have told us that some could take 10 days to pass it on because, first of all, they're going to use up old supplies. OK, well, let's get another one now on uh, energy bills. And this one is from Ian in Evington in Scotland. My question is, why is the standing charge of a gas meter going up in price? At the moment, I'm paying 18 pence a day, going up to 50 pence a day which is going to be £185 a year. Plus, I wanted to take my gas out and they told me to remove the meter. It would cost me £158. You just can't win. We well, can't win, can yeah. you? 
Well said, Ian, because this is a real curveball for the Chancellor because politicians don't talk about standing charges very much. This is the bit of the bill that pays for the infrastructure, the piping, the cables, as he says. It's an element of bills that have absolutely rocketed. Now, the government could have done something about that today because within standing charges are quite a number of government initiatives like the Warm Homes Discount, but they didn't act today, so people like Ian will not be pleased. Mm. OK, thanks, Chris. Um, Sarah, another one for you. This one's from, from, uh, from Margot, and she says, if you're a working pensioner claiming state pension, will you have to start paying national insurance contributions? Will you? We've had a lot of questions on pensions today, and the answer is from 2023, working pensioners will have to pay that rise of 1.25 percentage points. Now, that goes towards the health and social care levy, the levy that the government says will help to clear that COVID backlog in the NHS. So it means that an estimated 1.3 million working pensioners will have that amount deducted from their wages from 2023. All right, Sarah, thank you very much for your contributions. We're going to end with you, Chris, because there's a lot of people in very, very tough situations, and this is all very grim, isn't it? I mean, is there any light at the end of the tunnel? Well, I suppose Rishi Sunak had to signal very broadly, I get it, I'm listening, and you saw that in the focus, which was so much about the cost of living. So a lot of people may think the focus is there, but what about the response. A lot of people will be concerned about just how far down the line some of these measures are. For example, those tax cuts coming in 2024. That might reveal another of the Chancellor's focuses, which is the next general election. Currently, of course, scheduled for May 2024.